Welcome to the United Methodist Church at Mount Tabor, a Christ-centered, family-inspired, inclusive, and inviting church. Today is January 10, 2021, the first Sunday after Epiphany, the baptism of the Lord. Our announcements for this week are as follows. Disciple Fast Track Bible Study will begin on Thursday, January 14th, 7 p.m. on Zoom. Youth Bible Study will be Sunday, January 10th, 1 p.m. via Zoom. Our monthly food drive will be on January 31st from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's the last Sunday of every month. Tabor Treasures has opened January 5th and the hours are back to normal. We are here for your prayer requests. Contact us at the following number or the following email. We have four ways to give. And we are always praying for you here at Mount Tabor. Now let's begin our service. Opening prayer. God of creation, who brought forth light from darkness. We are your creation. May your spirit float over us today as it did in the beginning while we seek your grace, light and love. Let us worship, praise and honor your name and through your son Jesus, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God now and forever. This week, Dodie sent out an email to ask for your joys and concerns, and we have a few that we received, and we'll start in the order we received them. So some of the joys and concerns that we received today, or we're going to go over today, are um, we got one from Jill Downing, who's sharing concern for Taylor, a 12-year-old girl that she's known for six years now. She is hospitalized for mental health issues. And also she's asking for prayers for her family. Janet sharing a concern. It's my good friend, Janice, is undergoing a lumpectomy on Friday. Prayers for an easy surgery and recovery. Jeff Dickerson sharing a concern. A friend who lost her job on Christmas Eve in part due to her actions, but not fully. She did the work of three employees and was a great manager who cared for her store and staff deeply. We also have a joy from Jeff Dickerson sharing that Carly is studying online to be a vet tech and she made Dean's List the first semester. I have a joy and it's an awesome community coloring project you can see in the background that was completed here at the United Methodist Church at Mount Tabor. Those who worked on this were Jeff and Sharon Dickerson, Carolyn Fagan, Jewel Burns, Krista Keller, Hunter Keller, nice job, Hunter, Michelle Hoppler, Taylor Lowell, Janet Ryans, Danny Ververs, way to go, Danny. And last but not least, the idea maker is Hillary Ververs. 
Thank you all for the beautiful display for our church and for this service. This is definitely a display of togetherness through our individuality. It's awesome. Thank you so much. So let us pray. Creator God, when everything first began, water became a symbol for refreshing, of washing away, of renewing. Through the waters of creation, you brought forth abundant life. We have gathered this day to remember Jesus's baptism. How when he came up out of the water, your spirit proclaimed that he was your beloved son in whom you were very well pleased. Our spirits resound with that proclamation. In his baptism, Jesus's ministry was initiated. He dedicated his life to you completely and without reservation. Help us to dedicate our lives to you, to offer our best for you, to be of service to you by serving in your world. As we have lifted before you the names of people we celebrate, Carly and all those who worked on, this, on the poster and others we did not mention today, who are sharing joys with us as a community. We also lift up those near and dear to us who need your healing touch and your tender mercies like Taylor, Janice and Jeff's friend and those we did not name that you know God and you keep watch over each and every day. We have also lifted ourselves up as people in need of your grace. Our world is in the midst of strife, wars, oppression, famine, hunger, alienation, situations in which we have abused the world and each other. Our own nation is in conflict and people are turning to violence, Lord. Please keep us all safe in your spirit and heal us, our nation and this world. Lord, for we ask this in Jesus's name who taught us how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture readings, we have two. The first one is from Genesis. Genesis chapter one, verses one through five. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And the second reading comes from Acts, chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's sermon is called The Spirit. Did you ever help a friend move furniture? I've been there for a few of my friends especially since I have a truck. That's what happens when you end up getting a truck. The worst part of the move is when the decision to place the furnishing can't be finalized. Does it look better here or there? No, wait, over there. 
let's try it back here again. And you keep having to move the heaviest items back and forth until the creative spirit in your friend is, is finally satisfied or your back goes out. Well, this week in scripture, we read about a certain creative spirit like our moving friend, one that liked to move things around a lot, especially in our reading of Genesis chapter one, verse two. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. The spirit of God was hovering over the waters. That's one of my favorite texts. This text comes on the baptism of our Lord Sunday in Epiphany. It reminds us that creation began in the watery chaos, and so does our journey in our faith. We are baptized into chaos that God orders our lives with the dance of the spirit. Sometimes that ordering happens in darkness, but God smiles and darkness rolls aside. Ruach is the Hebrew word for God's breath, wind, and or spirit. To be more specific, in our case today, the Holy Spirit. A quick tour back through our confirmation instruction, and we remember that the Holy Spirit is part of the triune God. We have God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit all in one. The word ruach, when applied to God, can often indicate creative divine activity. God creates, empowers, emboldens, and sustains all things. Every breath we take, we remind ourselves that our life force exists because of God. God's breath, Ruach, filled our lungs. The spirit or wind that we cannot see empowers us and drives us to live for the creator in everything we do. With every breath we take, we seek to serve our God who fills us with the breath of life. Not only are we created with the spirit, but we're given the Holy Spirit as a guide when we become Christians by our baptism. The gospel of Mark chapter one, verse eight is written, I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In our second scripture today, Paul's first question to the believers is not, how were you baptized? Although he does get around to that. His first question is whether they have received the Holy Spirit, meaning did they live their lives aware of, open to, filled with, and guided by the Spirit of God? Let's ask ourselves these questions. Do we live our lives aware of the Holy Spirit? Do we live our lives open to the Holy Spirit? Do we live our lives filled with the Holy Spirit? And do we live our lives guided by the Holy Spirit? Regardless of how or where we were baptized, how is our life in the spirit now, today? How are we living out our baptism right now? And the key question does not find its final answer in the fact that after Paul laid his hands on the believers, they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Suppose Paul were to return a year later and ask them again, if they had received the Holy Spirit. And they were to answer, yes. Remember we spoke in tongues and prophesied? Paul would probably have replied, so what have you done since then? Our life in Christ is not just about particular events that might have taken place in the early or later days of our faith. Those moments, if and when they happen, are gifts from God to be treasured. But they are just starting points not ending points. After Paul laid his hands on the men and they spoke in tongues, they were not finished. They still had much to learn, much to bring to life as the spirit moved them. If their active life in the spirit had ended there, then they would still be missing the point of what the Holy Spirit makes possible. 
In fact, as their story continues, after Paul's initial contact with them, Paul spent two years in Ephesus doing mission work, and he took those believers along with him, the ones he laid hands on. One crucial aspect of baptism is not what happens when we're baptized, but what happens after we're baptized. The intent is to focus us on Christ and to share with others what Christ brings into our lives and into the world. Not to focus on Christ only as someone who did something for us back then, but to focus on Christ as someone who, through the power of the Spirit, lives in us and moves us forward today. I call it stumbling forward. Baptism opens our hearts and our minds to becoming instruments that bring unity and peace to our neighbors. The baptism of John is a name for Christian water baptism without the Holy Spirit. In a sense, the baptism of John was a baptism into moral improvement. It initiated persons into a great reform movement, and it was very important, but it wasn't the baptism of Jesus. It was a grassroots movement. Sometimes that reality, the faith of Jesus within the baptized, is not apparent to us. John, however, describes a different baptism through Jesus. In Jesus' baptism, the Holy Spirit has the central role. It is the spirit rather than the washing that affects the transformation of the baptized. The spirit creates a profound change in us because, at least in most Christian traditions, we receive faith that does not result from our fulfilling John's requirement to repent. We baptize infants who have no words of repentance. To be baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus is a baptism into the death and resurrection of Christ. It is a dying to self and a living for God. It is a recognition that in and of ourselves, we can do nothing. Therefore, we are willing to stand as sinners in the presence of God, claiming nothing but only counting on God's love and forgiveness and nothing else. This changes the center of our lives from some self-directed effort into a God-given grace. It's the difference between a person who is trying desperately to be good enough to enter God's kingdom and a person who admits that he or she is a sinner who will never be good enough, decides to rely fully on God's unmerited grace to bring him or her into the kingdom. How many of us are weary and burdened because we are trying to carry the weight of the world on our shoulders? Well, the good news is that we don't have to do this. God, in God's love and grace, is the one we are to rely on and can rely on to do the carrying for us. In our lesson from the Acts of the Apostles this morning, Paul comes upon some folks who are trying desperately to follow Jesus Christ, but they have not yet received the power they need in order to do this. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Paul asked them. No, they hadn't. They knew nothing about it. I fear that there are a lot of folks who have the baptism of John, but not the baptism of the Lord Jesus. Churches are filled with persons who are Christians, but not quite. We try to live good Christian lives. We have a high sense of moral responsibility, but have we truly died to self and been raised to live in Christ Jesus? Have we received the Holy Spirit? Have we received the power of God's grace? Doesn't it make all the difference? Baptism with water is only a sign of the new birth or of conversion, is it not? It's only water. Some churches and religious groups call it holy water, but it's still only water. It has no power in and of itself. Baptism is not magic. What gives baptism its power is the Holy Spirit, not the water in the font. It is the grace of God calling us to a transformed life to a new way of living, 
thinking and being by accepting for our very own the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as being more than sufficient to make up for all the shortcomings in our own life. It means having faith that God is gracious enough and willing enough and powerful enough to save us. And it's also about allowing the grace of God through the power of God's Holy Spirit to fashion us into the people we were created to be, into the people we can be only through Christ. It means that we have invited God into our lives and that God is at work in our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. In acknowledging our baptism, we acknowledge the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We now belong to God and what a reason to be thankful. We do indeed take on Christ's name. We are Christians, those who are called to follow Christ. What a privilege. As we begin to live through the Holy Spirit, our lives become cherished day by day, being moved by the Holy Spirit and all we do and all that we create and the all that we are. It's an awakening within ourselves. It's a knowing that we are not alone and that we belong to the great spirit that guides us all. Everything we do and create then becomes a gift to God. Amen. The service is now ended. Go and live in the spirit of your baptism. The same spirit that moved in creation. So use this powerful Holy Spirit to guide you as Jesus followers and continue to transform the world by making disciples of Jesus Christ in the name of God, our nurturer, the son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Make a great week this coming week. And don't forget that we collect food on the last Sunday of every month in front of the church from 10 to 12. This month, the date for collections is January 31st. Thank you for attending service today.